to shift a bit here. Um, a lot of the audience have done a few of these sessions. I think a lot of the audience are, are uh, up and coming producers, either in film and television, and trying to find out from us and the, the panel here how to get to the next level and how to move their project along. And, and I think Gary Lucchese was saying earlier, it's become more and more difficult in Hollywood even. Uh, yet there are a lot of projects, uh, again, from my past uh, sessions here, that people say, I've got a great project for Paris. I've got a great project to shoot in China. I've got a great project for here. I'd like to talk to each of, each of you a little bit about how the projects get forward. And, and starting with you, John, just a second. Do you, I know you have a first look deal at Fox, and, and, but you do work with other studios. Do you work also with independent producers? Can people come to you correctly, not sure. bang on your door today, but come here, to you and talk how, about projects? Here, here's how I became prolific in my early days. I partnered with a lot of young producers who had ideas, who had scripts. And in fact, I had a bullpen and I had an office and, and I had six or seven young producers in that bullpen. Um, you know, um, and it's, it's interesting, a lot of them went on to, um, you know, I, Channing Dungey, who's chairman of ABC, um, you know, she was in our bullpen. Um, and, and a lot of other young producers have done really, really well. So I don't do it as much anymore, but it was a great way for me to be um, a mentor producer there were a lot of ideas that came in that way. Um, you know, a lot of spec scripts. It was a time when there were a tremendous, tremendous number of spec scripts getting made. That spec script markets died up, um, which is too bad because that could supercharge, you know, your production process. And, um, but, and the studios are all very, very focused on IP today. Um, and, and it's all energy going and getting that IP, tracking down those rights holders finding that book and a lot of time it's the young producers that have the time and the energy to kind of go and do that and if you can get your hands on that project and you can team with um, a more senior producer who's been through the process sometimes it can supercharge it i always loved mentoring younger producers i always loved giving them access on the set um, and taking care of them a lot of successful producers in town like to just take your project and give you money, you'll never hear from them again. I never thought that was the right way to do it. It became a great business for me. I probably got 25 movies made that way. Wow, fantastic. And um, so Fred, and talking again about getting the movies made and the budget and all that, so many things go into uh, getting to the point where you can shoot the movie. And, yeah, I, and, yeah. Oh, I've thought about this and that, uh, for the young producers out there, what would be my advice is that you have to do tons and tons of research. You have to find out where the best place to make the movie is, but then you have to find out who shot there, how did they do it, who they hired, who's the right production service company. Um, Chris mentioned that in Istanbul. Who's the right company that will get you what you want and not steal your money? Uh, in China, you have to find out who that one person is you can trust. Because when I went there, I didn't know I could never figure out who was in charge. So you have to find that one person that everybody's gonna, uh, gonna go through. In Australia- Fred, call Ellen. Yeah. In, in Australia, you have to find the, uh, for example, we're doing a film there now, and we got uh, an extra 16% rebate because we knew the right person who could get the right government officials to get me to the prime minister of Australia, where I flew to Canberra, I met the prime minister, I took the picture, um, I met Julie Bishop, who's like the, the foreign minister, and, and, and we developed a relationship, and we got the money. So you have to really do your homework. Um, for example, if you have a film that can be made in Australia, you can get a 40% rebate if it's Australian content, which means it was written by Australian, directed by Australian, and produced by an Australian. So if you had a few Jack and you convince him we can do a movie really quick and you can live in your house in Bondi, we'll make you a producer. You can get 40% plus, so you get 40% off, off, off your film, plus the exchange rate is at 70 cents. So you really have to get on the phone, go to IMB, DB, find out who shot where, call them, keep working at working at working it. Um, By the way, if you do your visual effects on a movie in Montreal, you get 40% back now also. Well, that's, I mean, it's, it's 
constant finding out where and how you do it. And the other thing is, if you go someplace, it isn't as easy just to think you're going to get the money. You have to find out what, for example, in Hungary, you don't just get the money. You have to have a, like Fox has had their, their European distribution going through through Hungary, which yeah. means we could get a tax, tax rebate. rebate for them. It isn't as simple as someone walking in with $10 and saying, do I get a rebate? No, there's huge tax implications. So you have to figure out all that out. So my recommendation is get on the phone, call people, find out how they did it, and make sure you're going to the right place and you're going to get your money. I think, you know, your experience lately has been the studio level, and these are all the big questions that get answered uh, or they get asked. And uh, a lot of, I think, the people here today are still the independents looking to get that done. But what you're saying is the research, I think, is amazing. What we've talked about a lot at the Producers Guild is reaching out to a partner in a country. If you have a, a film that you think uh, is written for France or written for Italy or written for Australia, wherever it is, or, or could be shot in one of those locations, even though it's written for somewhere else, to reach out and find a partner in that country and start your process there and you can come to the table when you need to get the financing with Fox or whoever it is with a package already in place. We know we're going to get 40%, we know we're going to get 30%, we've got this cameraman, we've got this element and it helps move that project forward. Um, so if you had $500,000 of your family's money, yes. where would they go? Would they go to Cannes Film Festival to look for partners? Something like that? Um, Khan is a difficult market, uh, you know, maybe because so much is going on there at a higher level, uh, it's, there's a lot of noise and if you, know, if you don't know exactly where to go, it's very daunting and very expensive. Um, I found, uh, and I've done a lot of research on my own projects, I'll look, as you said exactly, I'll look on Studio System or IMDB and find out who the producers were on a certain movie I liked that shot in, in South Africa. And I'll contact them. I'll cold call them and say I'm from Hollywood. And you'd be surprised how open people are outside. And I say Hollywood is a very closed situation, for, uh, I find, for many young people. Outside of the, the country, how open people are to talking to you if you have a script, if you have a project, if you have some experience. So that's a really great pathway to go. Um, but again, partnering is something we talk about the PGA a lot. 